Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7b linear transport and exponential change practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be solving today. Uh, we basically have a capacitor in some circuit. At the initial time we close the switch and the capacitor begins to charge. And we basically need to draw three graphs. Uh, we need to draw a graph for the charge on the capacitor, a graph for the current in the resistor, and also the change in voltage across the resistor. Um, and we need to indicate, you know, the maximums, the half-lives, and everything that we can possibly figure out. So as you can see, I have uh, the problem over here, and I have three empty graphs. One for the charge, one for the current, and then one for the voltage across the capacitor. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is, um, I'm, I'm just gonna figure out a loop rule for this uh, circuit over here, uh, because I will need a loop. All right, so this is my loop rule. So now let's see, my loop rule is uh, 12 because it, this is my battery uh, plus the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the capacitor is equal to zero. And now just remembering that delta V across the resistor is negative IR by definition and delta V across the capacitor is in this case, the capacitor starts completely uncharged and is charging. So delta Vc is negative uh, Q over C in this case. So let's see. So this is my, uh, you know, if I rewrite this, this is 12 minus IR minus Q over C is equal to zero. And this, this is basically my loop rules. Uh, well, it's, it's the same loop, it's just written differently. So now, at the very beginning, the capacitor is completely uncharged, which means that um, Q is equal to zero because the capacitor is fully uncharged. So my initial value for C, uh, for the uh, charge, is just going to be zero. Now, my initial value for the current can be uh, just substitute over here. So, if I take this and I say that t is equal to zero, then this is 12 minus i r is just equal to three. And then q is equal to zero. So at this time, spe at this time specifically, there is no Q over C and this is equal to zero. So my initial current is equal to 12 divided by three. So this is equal to four, four amps. So my initial current is just gonna be uh, one, two, three, four. And it's going to start over here. And my initial voltage across the resistor, uh, if we just remember our definition, which is that voltage is equal to negative IR, our voltage at the beginning is just our current at the beginning times our resistor. So this is four times three. So this is equal, oh, negative, because it's negative IR. So this is equal to uh, negative 12 volts. So let's see, let me just grab a different color. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine, ten. What are we gonna do? Oh, okay, so let's just do um, three, six, nine, twelve. So we start at twelve over here. This is our initial negative 12. As you can see, I didn't even bother uh, 
using the positive side of this graph because what I need to graph is the voltage across a resistor and resistors are always dissipative so they always take away energy so I didn't even see the point in having a positive side. If it's a voltage across a resistor then that's a negative and then that's it. So that's why my graph is just negative because I didn't even bother. So that uh, that's our initial values. So now we need final values. So let's see. Our final values are, so at T, you know, after the capacitor is fully charged, something that I said in lecture is that when a capacitor is fully charged, it opens up. So if it opens up, we don't have any current anymore because the charge can't fully loop around. So our current is equal to zero. So our final value for the current is zero. So we have a final value for that. Now, uh, our final value for delta V across a resistor, just again, by definition, has to be equal to zero as well because if your final current is zero, then your final voltage is zero times three, uh, which is the value of the resistor, so that is equal to zero. So this graph ends up at zero as well. And now we need to figure out what the uh, value of Q is. So at Q, if we substitute, then our loop rule is 12 minus 0 because i is equal to 0 minus q over c is equal to 0 so uh, you know our final q is equal to uh, 12 times c so c is equal to 2 so this is 24 and the units for Q are Coulomb. So this is going to start at zero and it's going to end at um, 24. So now we have initial values, final values. So at this point we know where every graph starts, where every graph ends. But remember that in order to get full credit for an answer, you also need to supply a, uh, a half-life. So we need to figure out what the half-life is. Um, so first of all, all of our exponential decays are going to happen. You know, the half-life is going to be at the exact same uh, value. So I'm just gonna draw a dashed line over here. And then our second half-life, which is usually, you know, we, we let's just let's just go ahead and be super precise here. We're not really rushing for time. So this is going to be my second half-life. Oh, hello. What are you doing? Oh my goodness. And then this is going to be my third half-life and then I think that's more than enough. So let's just go ahead and practice our definitions of half-life. You can't sit there, that's the keyboard. All right, I'm gonna need to lift. There we go. So first of all, we can calculate tau because tau is just R times C. So tau is equal to uh, three times two, that would be equal to six. And we know that the half-life is just natural log of two times tau. So T one half is equal to um, natural log of 2 times 6, that is equal to 4.15. Uh, 
So this first half-life is 4.15, 4 4.15, and then 4.15. The second half-life is going to occur at twice that, so 8.3. And then the third half-life is going to be um, 4.15 times 3 is going to be 12.45, 12.45, 12.45. So now we just need to figure out uh, what the values are going to be. So the first half-life uh, in terms of the y-axis, it's always the middle point between your initial and your final value. In this case, the first half-life over here would just be uh, 12, because that would be my initial value. Uh, in this case, my initial is 4 and my final is 0, so the first half-life is going to be over here at 2. And in this case, my uh, initial is negative, 12 finally zero, so my half-life is going to be over here at six. Now my second half-life, by definition, is the, the, uh, the halfway distance between my first half-life and my final value. In this case, uh, it's the middle point between 12 and 24. So that would be 18. So 18 over here, again, it's the distance between my first half-life and my final value. So that would be middle point between two and zero, that would be equal to one. And again, it's the distance between my first, uh, it's the middle point, I'm sorry, between my first half-life and my final value. So middle point between negative six and zero, that would be equal to negative uh, three. And the third half-life, by definition, is the distance between my second half-life and my final point. So that would be the halfway distance between 18 and 24. So that would be 21. So over here. Uh, Middle distance between 1 and 0, that would be 0 0.5, so over here. And then middle distance between negative 3 and 0, that would be 1.5. And now we do have more than enough to just... Trace our graphs. So like this and then like this and we do have more than enough information to get full credit now uh, how many half lives should you uh, should you do on any given problem well uh, the answer is very simple if uh, if the problem is not mentioning any amount of half lives then usually just getting the first one and then just continuing your graph is going to be fine uh, if your graph is being very specific amount the total time that you need to cover in your graph then I would recommend seeing if the second one happens within that amount of time and just making sure to cover that as well uh, just to be extra precise and if your problem is telling you that you need to do three like on the other problem that I just solved on the water bottle then you need to do three so it really depends on the problem. Usually, uh, you know, just, just look at this time over here. If they aren't saying anything, if they are giving you full control of the axis, then just one is okay. If they are telling you how many values you should plot, then, uh, then you should just plot that amount of values. For example, for this particular case, I wasn't provided with any... Uh, any empty graphs so I pretty much decided how much time I wanted to cover on my graph so I was able to do three 
But uh, if this were a quiz and I was crunching time, honestly, I would just do one. But again, this is a practice problem and we do have time to cover it up. And I do think that it is important for you to know not only the definition of the first half-life, but also the definition of the second and third half-lives. Uh, so anyways, I hope that this problem was useful. If it was, please make sure to leave a like. It really helps promote our channel on YouTube. And I'll see you guys on the next video.